Okay, so for this uh, video, we're going to be going over uh, topic 21.1 .1 of the physics syllabus. And this is quite a short chapter, it's only got two learning outcomes in it, and hopefully we'll be able to get through it quite quickly. So this one is basically understanding what a magnetic field is and how to, how to draw one. So a, mag a magnetic field is in fact actually the same as an electric field, just from a different point of view. But it's really quite complicated, and for classical Newtonian mechanisms, we can just see them as two separate ent entities. But if you go on to um, study physics further, you will eventually see that they are the same thing. So if you see a charge moving along, it produces a magnet magnetic field. But if you see a stationary charge, we consider it as an electric field. But anyway, so the magnet is just another type of uh, field, and it has... um quite simple laws and magnets have been around for a long long time they've known magnets since about 1500 BC and um, you know just seeing little things spin around like uh, they've got compasses have been around since basically forever so uh, the law of magnets is a very simple law so the first law we're going to learn is the law of magnets it's very very simple and it's like this like poles attract unlike poles, oh sorry, like poles repel and unlike poles attract. And that's very simple. I mean we've all played with magnets as children and we know that all magnets should have a north and a south pole. So if I just go ahead and draw that. So all magnets have uh, a south pole and a north pole. And basically uh, you should know that if you take a if you take a, another magnet, which I'll draw right here, okay, and if this one here was also a north pole, and this one here was a south pole, we would know that they obviously repel. But um, if this, if we were to tra change this one here uh, into a, uh, if we were to make a flip magnet round and make this one a south pole and change that into north pole would know that they attract so that's quite simple what we do have to realize though is there is no such thing as a magnetic monopole whereas for the electric fields you have the idea that you have you can have just a proton by itself or an electron just a proton all by itself and we can also have just you know an electron by itself um, magnets are a little bit different well, for every magnet, there must be a north and a south pole. Theoretically, with quantum mechanics, we can get monopoles, but for our purposes, we all consider that all magnets have a north and a south pole. And what's really interesting is if you go ahead and, say, chop this magnet in half, what you would expect is, you know, the north side to stay north and the south side to stay south. But what really happens is you end up with two magnets, and both the magnetic magnets have a north and a south pole, which is really quite interesting if you think about it. So anyway, um, moving on. Oops, sorry about that. Oh, there you go. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so what causes these magnetic fields? Now that you know what they are. Uh, now you know that, that you know what they are. We have to kind of explore, you know, how these come about. And there's two primary ways that they can be caused. Um, number one is they they are uh, natural. Uh, well, maybe natural ones. Permanent magnets. And we've all seen these around. You know, um, you have a little horseshoe shape going on. So they kind of look like that. You have these permanent magnets, and these are normally ferrous metal. Uh, ferrous metals and we've seen them around. And But the other way, which a lot of people don't realize, is that magnets can be induced magnets through current carrying wires. So what's, this is kind of how magnetic fields were originally proved conclusively. What someone noticed is that, well they always knew that magnetic fields existed, they didn't really understand anything about them. But one scientist noticed that uh, when he was standing next to a uh, current carrying a high, uh, sorry, a uh, wire car carrying a high current, the, um, the ma uh, compass he was holding uh, deflected towards a wire. So this is where this discovery came about. So what you'll find is that if you have a 
wire carrying a current of any kind, let's say that's the current going that way, um, you will actually induce a magnetic field, and which is quite interesting. All all uh, conductors, when they carry a current, will induce a magnetic field. And this is kind of to do with the idea that a, magne a magnetic field and an uh, electric field are the same thing. So all, um, if you, as you know, electrons all have the same, all have an electric field, and therefore they all have man magnetic fields. So that, that's kind of why all current carrying conductors create magnetic fields. Okay, so um, how do we draw magnetic fields? Let's take a look. So, magnetic fields kind of, we kind of visualize them in a series of lines. So, if I just get, go ahead and get my uh, magnet, here we go. Alright, so there's a few rules for magnet. Oh, actually, let's draw a bar of magnet first, it's a bit simpler. Okay, uh, move that down a bit. So, um, let's take a look. So, if that's my North Pole, and that there is my South Pole. So, there's a few, there's kind of... Uh, three fundamental rules for drawing mag uh, magnetic field lines. Number one, the magnetic field lines always start at north and end at south. Um, this is kind of the field lines show the movement of what a magnetic model, how a magnetic monopole would move. Even though we just said they don't exist, but theoretically, if a magnetic monopole existed, how would it move in this field? Um, magnetic field lines are smooth curves which never touch or cross. And there's a reason for this. Um, not just because it would look absurdly messy if they did touch or cross, but you will see that in point three. Point three is the strength of the magnetic field is indicated by the distance between the lines. So this is a kind of a really important one. Closer equals stronger. So there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and try and draw some magnetic fields. I'm not the best artist, so this may come out a little bit wonky, but uh, okay. So here we go. So magnetic field lines always end at north and always come back at south. So you're... Well, okay, let's try it. Give this a go. Yeah, just pretend these are smooth curves. Ah. Okay, what I was trying to convey here is that, um, as you can see, my outer line is further away from inner line, and that's because magnetic fields, kind of, just like electric fields, exhibit the radial kind of effect. That is, the closer you are to the magnet, the stronger the field is. So I try to convey that here, um, it doesn't come out very clearly. And what is important is you must indicate the direction of your field. So that, see, all my, they always go from north into south. Leaving the north pole towards the south pole. So, that's how you draw magnetic fields. There we go. So, that's how you draw magnetic fields. And um, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is... Uh, the idea of a compass, which we, this is basically, which is pretty much the most common magnet we've we've all experienced and all kind of used. Um, I want to point out a very very interesting fact. Okay, firstly, uh, this one is not as important to the syllabus, but it's always good common knowledge to know. As you probably know, there is a geographic north and south pole that looks like that, and um, this is where all our maps point towards the north and the south. So we call this one here the North Pole, and we call this one here the South Pole, and they're kind of in Antarctica. And if you get a huge world map, they all the all the um, long uh, all the uh, grid lines will eventually converge towards these points. But what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, these aren't actually the positions of uh, magnetic poles. So the magnetic pole is kind of like that, and there will be the magnetic north, sometimes called true north, and this will be the magnetic south. And uh, the reason for this is, what, you might be wondering, why didn't they just put the north pole at the same place as the magnetic north? 
And that's very... The reason is because the mag magnetic north pole of the Earth is actually always moving. It's constantly moving. And the reason for that is because the position of a magnetic, uh, magnetic pole is actually a really complex thing determined by, like, um, movement of the fluids in the Earth. And so the pole actually keeps moving, so there is actually a distance between them. So the north your compass points to is not the same north as your map shows what north is. And this is an idea called magnetic declination that um, most navigators and trampers should be very comfortable with. If you are more interested in that, you can go read up on that. And so that's called magnetic declination. Um, uh, so, yeah, um, but also what's very interesting is that if you have a magnet, a magnet, like, uh, or that, if you have a magnet and you have what you'll call it, the north pole of a magnet, the south pole, um, the north pole of a magnet acts, points towards the north pole, and this is actually what we've um, classified as the north pole of a magnet, which I might be sounding a little bit crazy here, but uh, stick with me. But the north pole of a magnet points to the north pole, but the north pole is actually, its polarity is actually a south pole. So. If you had the Earth as a giant bar magnet, you would find that the North Pole is the south end of a magnet. So if we just made the Earth a giant, because that's essentially what the Earth is. The Earth is essentially a giant bar magnet. But the top end would be a south pole, and the bottom end would be a north pole. So our naming and the magnetic poles are kind of mixed up. And that's just to make our lives easier when we work with compasses, because as we saw before, like poles repel and unlike poles attract. So the north pole of a magnet will always go towards the south pole. We still call it a north pole. So um, that last bit was just an interesting fact for you, and I hope you enjoyed this. So that is topic 21 done. Uh, please subscribe if you like my videos.